we are fast approaching the end of summer, the beginning of fall, and with all this heat, there is one plant that's just loving it, and that's okra. It's been growing exponentially, and it makes sense because okra is originally from Africa, and it's one of those heritage plants that was brought to us. Unfortunately, it wasn't a positive experience that brought it to the American continent, but I'm glad that we have it today so that we can enjoy it in our meals. Okra is a vegetable widely used in Africa, and it was brought to the Americas by the enslaved African peoples who cultivated it, keeping some of the culinary heritage of their motherland. It happens to be more commonly used in the southern United States, where the presence of enslaved peoples was greater, and the warmer climate facilitated its cultivation. Now, okra is not the type of plant that just produces once and you have one big harvest then you take it and that's it. No, it's a daily commitment. You have to come out and every day um, look at your okra plants and see if there are any that are good. Because if you don't do that, they're gonna become too old and fibrous. Uh, ideally, the smaller you get them, the younger you get them, the better they taste and the less fibrous they are. So do not let them grow too big. There is a tendency for us to want to wait for vegetables to get to maturity, but that's not the case with okra. You, you want it very young and tender. Obviously you want to think about, well, I want something a little bit large, large enough for me to, to make it worthwhile um, harvesting, but at the same time, be careful. There is one way of testing, and that's to break the, the end of the okra. If it snaps easily, that means it's tender. If it doesn't, that means it's not. I picked up on this trick early on in life when I was a child in Brazil. It was a common sight to see people testing the okra pods as they picked it in the fresh produce markets, carefully snapping the tips one by one, making sure each pod was tender before bagging it. This made selecting okra a bit more time consuming than, say, picking tomatoes. Unlike tomatoes, color is not a reliable indication of when it was good for consumption. Since okra can go from tender to a spiny pod overnight without changing color and without growing all that much. While size can correlate with tenderness, different varieties grow to different sizes and a plant that is stressed can produce small fibrous pods while another plant produces larger pods that are still tender. When you pick your own pods, you know how long they have been growing and the sooner you pick them, the better they will be. Since the okra plant produces about a pod every day or two, that means that it's a good idea for you to go out, gather your pods daily and set them aside until you have enough to cook a meal. Or you can plant as many plants as you would like pods for a certain meal. So let's say you want to make meals that are around 30 pods, you plant 30 plants. I didn't plant that many, but um, it's enough for what I want to do. And for a recipe, you usually need about six, seven, eight per person, depending on how much people like okra. That is a good rule of thumb to remember. I ended up having about eight to 10 plants producing in my enclosed garden bed. That meant about eight pods every day or so. Once you pick it, you can refrigerate it up to a week. That way you can collect more pods if you are thinking of doing a bigger dish of okra. One of the best ways to enjoy okra is by cooking it as a stir fry. This is how Brazilians usually eat them. First, I cut up the okra pods into thin slices, discarding the nub in the end. That part is too tough and woody to be edible. Okra is naturally mucilaginous. Some people don't mind, and others hate that. If you don't want it to become very gooey, don't add water. Let them air dry a bit, and remember that oil and acid will help cut out the goo. If the dawn break is near, but the skies close in fear, and rain clouds won't shed. Constantly stir it with a spoon. Add more oil if you want. Although it may not be the healthiest way of eating okra, it is the most delicious. I decided to add curry powder. This is definitely not a traditional Brazilian ingredient, but I like it. 
Okra is also widely eaten in India, so it makes sense. Hot pepper also works really well with okra. Brazilians usually start by browning garlic first, but I decided to do it differently since I'd rather have each dish showcase one seasoning, instead of using the same flavor base on every dish. Don't add salt in the beginning. Allow the okra to caramelize first. Once you see browning happening in the pan, you can add salt to taste. You don't have to overcook it, especially if you slice the okra thinly. I think acidic foods work really well with okra, so I picked up a perfectly ripe black brandy wine tomato I had harvested earlier from the garden. I wanted to use it as a complementary pair to the okra. Brandywine tomatoes are naturally rich in flavor and have perfectly balanced acidity. After cleaning it up, I decided to cut it into thin slices. I wanted to make a more creative tomato salad that would highlight the brandywine's superior taste and celebrate the fresh garden-grown okra. I made a sort of tomato sandwich with a stir-fried okra in the middle. To garnish and flavor it, I julienned a couple of basil leaves and drizzled extra virgin olive oil over the dish. A pinch of salt to season the tomato was the final touch. Sometimes you don't need much to bring some joy into your day. The simple pleasures of a perfectly ripe tomato accompanied by flavorful garden okra is enough to put a smile on your face. In the next block, I'll share what happened to the okra later in the year and how I saved seed for the next year right after this commercial. As summer started to wane and the days grew shorter, the okra plants had been pumping out several pods each day. In the middle of this early glut, I ended up forgetting to harvest a few growing pods in two tall plants. In just a matter of days, they were too tough to be eaten. You must keep vigilant if you want your okra to maximize production, because as soon as you forget to harvest a pod, the plant starts to put all its energy into seed developing, and soon the plant stops producing new tender pods. Since I wanted to plant more okra next year, and okra seed is relatively expensive due to its larger size, I decided to allow these pods to mature for the rest of the season so I could harvest the seeds come winter time. Around the end of the summer, I noticed that the okra was growing pretty fast, setting up a lot of pods, but I also knew that there wasn't gonna be that many um, weeks of warm weather left for more to produce. So since I did wanna save some seeds, I decided to let them stay on the plant and ripen so that I could collect the seed. It's important for the seeds of okra to stay on the plant as long as possible for them to be viable as seeds. Another reason why I did this is because okra seed is a bit expensive if you stop to think about. Because they're larger seeds compared to other plants like say lettuce and because they produce I think relatively less in an area than other plants seed wise, they become more expensive seeds. Because of that, I feel like it's a good choice to save your own okra seed. Um, you'll probably have, I'll probably have a lot of seeds so I can actually sow liberally next year and not worry too much about germination. That's always a plus so that then I can thin it out and that saves me money in the long run. Each okra pod will produce more than two to three times the number of seeds that come standard in a typical seed packet. That meant I could have the equivalent of 30 or more seed packets for free. 
They would also be much fresher seed that in my experience tends to be highly viable with high germination rates. The important thing when saving okra seed is to allow it to stay in the plant for as long as possible so that it can have all the energy deposited into the growing pods. If you live in a warm place, you can allow the plant to completely wither before picking the pods, but don't let the pods crack open allowing the seeds to drop to the ground. In a colder climate like mine, pick them in late fall before frost happens and let it continue developing and drying inside. As long as the pods are very hard and fibrous and have started to change color, losing the earlier bright green, the seeds should be mature enough to produce new plants come next spring.